So look what we have here. This is a force screw designed to be used with that hydraulic uh, wheel bearing or axle separator that I purchased several months ago that didn't work very well. One of my YouTube subscribers recommended it. It's a Laser Tool 5500 impact force screw. So you use manual force with a wrench and beat on it with a significant hammer. I had to buy it out of Europe. I actually got it from do-it-yourself car service parts. It was 46, 44 pounds and uh, 25 pounds for shipping. And then there was another 35, $35 Canadian for duty and taxes. But I'll show you what it works with. So I made a video a few months ago about this tool. It's a hydraulic ram. It's supposed to produce 10 tons. And although it works pretty good, the hydraulic oil leaked out of it. Uh, I took it apart and refilled it, but it still leaks. But this screw, this force screw, goes into these threads, which are going to bolt onto the wheel bearing and then press the axle out. So I've still got that axle from that Ford Escape that I could not get apart. I ended up changing the wheel bearing and the axle assembly. I've still got it here. It's sitting underneath the bench. I kept it for this time to see if this tool will work. So here's that axle shaft assembly. I ended up, like I said, replacing the entire axle shaft because I couldn't press this out. I tried putting this in an actual 20 ton press and it wouldn't move. I think the key is we need a shock load on this thing. I even heated this up with a torch as much as I dared and it still wouldn't come out. Now I was looking for a nut, but because of me beating on here, I ended up brunelling or peening over the end of the axle shaft. So I can't find a nut. I don't really care if I wreck this axle anyways. I just want to see if this tool is going to work now. So basically we need to bolt this on and you can see it's got all five bolts. Now you need to use flat washers to support it. So I'm going to get set up here. So there's a tool set up. Like I said, normally I put the nut back on flush, partly because you don't want to damage the end of the threads. Put some uh, synthetic gear oil on the threads. Use washers underneath these nuts so that you don't spread these slots. Some of them are, won't spread, but these ones will spread. I spread it with the other tool. This is a 30 millimeter hex, so we're going to tighten this up with the impact and then whale on this with, with a hammer and see if the shock and the pressure will remove this axle shaft. So I got the bearing assembly, which is junk, clamped in the vise. I got this threaded in here. And I put significant pressure on it now. I'm going to hit this. Oh, that's interesting. That comes right out. I don't think that was supposed to come right out. But it did. Did the axle shaft move? Not yet. Let's put some more pressure on it. Looking in here at the joint to see if it actually let go. Let's hit it again. Nothing moved yet. be a tremendous amount of pressure on that shaft. Not moving. If it's turning, I can't see it. I should put a paint mark on here so I can see if the shaft is turning. Hmm. 
Well, now you don't see any separation between that axle shaft and that bearing in there. But we'll try a little bit more. Put a paint dot on the threads and the housing so I can tell if this is actually rotating anymore. And we're going to try it some more. So here goes. Let's see if we can move this any. Well, it's definitely going, but my washers are bending here. I didn't buy grade 8 washers. I should have. And I should have probably stacked up two or three of them. Well, it's turned about 180 degrees. But that could be just my washers bending here. Let's wail on it a bit. No, that's not moving. And the bearings come loose in the vise here. That's not moving. See what I mean by my washers are bending. And it's spreading those slotted holes out. So I need to stack up some more washers. So I removed the wheel nuts and put three washers behind each wheel nut so that they don't try to pull through. And I'm going to tighten it up with the impact gun. I got, again, I got gear oil on the threads. I got a white paint dot here so I can see if it's turning. And I don't see anything coming free in here yet. But we're going to hit it. When in doubt, hit it. Reposition this in the vices. Oh, is it my imagination? Or is there some movement there? Let's see if we can tighten it some more. Sure, 0.5 to change the wheel bearing. You know how hard can it be? One axle nut and four bolts. Let's hit it again. Not moving. Wow. I don't see any gap in there. Look what's happening. I just had to whale on it harder with two arms other than one arm. Definitely moving. Yeah, spare parts falling off the bench. Definitely moving. I gotta reposition this. Well, it's definitely coming off. Even with two and three washers on there, they're still bending. Next time I'm going to get some grade 8 washers the right size. These ones are a little bit too big. I think they're half inch or 9 sixteenths. So it's come apart about 3 sixteenths of an inch now. 
Let's try again with the screw, the forcing screw. I got a paint mark on here so I can see where it is. I think the forcing screw is actually starting to push it, but we're going to hit it. Yeah, you can see that it's coming now because as soon as I hit it, I can turn the forcing screw. Got about a quarter inch now. Let's try hitting it. That made a big difference. Now at some point I'm going to bottom out this driver in the hub. I'm hoping I'll be able to tell when that happens. That didn't release anything. Hmm. Well, I'm going to take the screw out and have a look because maybe my tool is actually bottoming in there. I've got the axle shaft out. Oh, almost a half an inch. So I pushed it as far as I could until it felt like it had stopped and the end of the axle and the driver bottomed out so it won't go any further than that. Um, it's still seized in there but it's actually moving now so I should be able to get it out the rest of the way. And then we'll have to see how badly damaged the end of the axle shaft is. Obviously if you had to put the nut in you would have been only able to push it in about an eighth of an inch and then the nut would have likely bottomed on the in the housing and you would have to take it apart and take the nut out but nevertheless it did work a tremendous amount of force from this tool uh, what makes it better though is if you use some grade 8 washers under the these are wheel nuts so they're tapered and they have a tendency to spread this these slots even though I put three washers I wasn't using hardened washers so that would make it better so I'm going to try to tap it out, of, out the rest of the way with just a, a hammer and a punch, a drift. It's actually moving pretty easy. Okay, so the axle is, is out. They are no longer married. Uh, the axle shaft is a bit damaged on the end, but I've seen worse. Now I have a thread chaser that I bought a set of slip thread tracers for cleaning up these threads. Actually the end of this axle shaft isn't bad at all. Let's have a closer look. Come on, focus. Focus. So clean that up in a wire brush and run a thread chaser on it. We should be good. This is why the bearing was replaced. But when this side didn't come apart, I ended up having to pull the entire axle out through the steer, or through the knuckle. It was a rear wheel bearing on a Ford Escape, I think a 2011 or 2012. And fortunately, the axle shaft came out through the, the knuckle. And I didn't have to cut the axle shaft or some silly thing or take the knuckle off. But theoretically, that tool would have worked on the car at least as much as you can push the axle in. To the uh, you know collapsing the the CV shaft or the, the tripod joint on the inboard side, you have to be careful you're not beating on the differential. But I guess uh, we'll clean up the threads and we have a an axle that we can use on the right side now. If the right side is a problem, taking it apart in the future. So here's a kit of thread chasers I bought for axle nuts. And if you use a thread pitch gauge, like this one, on the thread here, you can see that it's, if that'll focus, it's a 1.5 thread pitch. That fits in there nice and neat. So that's this size here. Now the trouble is, the threads are compromised right at the beginning of this axle shaft. So to, to get this to start is difficult. So I'm going to modify this and uh, make it easier to work with. Something should be designed like this, in my opinion. So here's my idea. I took the die, the thread chaser, 
and cut it in half. So now you can put the thread chaser onto the threads where it's in good condition. My thought was to take this 32 millimeter socket and drill holes in it and put two bolts. But the socket is ultra hard so I need a cobalt drill bit or something because I can't seem to drill it. I wanted to drill it, tap it, or drill it and weld two nuts. I don't think tapping it's going to be an option because the socket's pretty hard steel even though it's not a very premium quality socket. I think it's jet or something like that. You can see the drill bit didn't want to touch it. So I put a pair of vice grips on it and clamped it across here and that worked. And of course put some penetrating fluid on it and back the threads out from the good threads rather than trying to start in the damaged threads. That's my thought. I've looked for these type of tools, split, split dies, and somebody should make a tool like this for this purpose. So I managed to drill through this socket with a concrete drill bit. I had to sharpen it like five or six times each side, and it actually drilled better with no oil. When I put oil on it, it stopped cutting. So I'm going to try and weld two nuts because I, I know I can't thread this with any taps that I have. And besides, I didn't drill it to the right size. This is the only concrete drill bit that I could find in my arsenal. So I managed to saw, or weld two six millimeter nuts on there. So now you can put, split the the thread chaser, put it on the threads, put the socket over it, and then work the socket back off rather than trying to start it. And I sprayed penetrating fluid in there. I'm going to tighten the vise. Work it back on again. Now keep in mind these cheap eBay thread chasers are not the best quality. They're not dies, they're just thread chasers. So these bolts are a little long. They could get in the way of a wheel bearing studs or something, but they could be cut off. Well, I'm going to take it off and have a look. So I decided to uh, deburr the end of the axle a bit and I clamped it in the vise upright so it's less wobbly. And again, put the thread chaser on in two halves so you line up the existing good threads. And basically, put pressure on the two halves of the die so that it holds it into the threads and then back it out like this. And there's the threads cleaned up. There's the thread chaser. It would be better if this was a, an actual die and not just a thread chaser but if I can find a set of dies and they need to be hex dies but that looks pretty good. You find a nut to put on there. Is that the size nut there? I don't think that's the right size. Yeah, that's not quite the right thread pitch. Well, maybe. It looks square. I'll double check the thread pitch. I know you're probably saying, well, why not just change the axle shaft? It's only worth a hundred bucks for all this time. But sometimes the axle is not available. Sometimes the parts aren't around. And sometimes you can't get this axle shaft off the car without major disassembly of suspension components. And you could do this theoretically on the vehicle. So there's my idea for a service tool. It's a little crude. Boy, that socket was hard. I had a tough time drilling that. 
Thanks for watching.